Dance. And I'm so in love with you for what you've done for me. Here I am to worship you without any restraint. You're the only way, the truth and life that makes me You're listening to Spiritual Encounters with Pastor Casper McLeod. And now, here's your lion-hearted host, Pastor Casper. Welcome to another edition of Spiritual Encounters, and I am your lion-hearted host, Pastor Casper, along with my dear friend and co-host, Pastor Brandon Gallops, and our producer, Barry Richard. So don't touch that dial because we've got some important stuff to share with you today. Think about this. Um, we're looking at a time when maybe AI could be more dangerous than most people could imagine. Um, but the bottom line for us is finding out how much the Lord Jesus truly loves you, helps you understand how much he loves everybody else, even those people that frustrate you, even those people that aggravate you. God loves them and he wants you to love them. Um, with his love. So we got like dangerous experiments going on with CERN, uh, D-Wave, nanobots, artificial intelligence, neural lace, uh, transhumanism, deep states, uh, secret societies, DARPA, HARP, chemtrails, extraterrestrials, we got the abductions, the phenomena, the hybrid reading program, Babylon, UFOs. Uh, it's kind of like a George Orwell 1984 playing out right before us today. Um, so you've got the thought police, they're hard at work behind the scenes on social media, banning and censoring all the content they don't want you to see for some reason. Um, and I think the world is growing darker, my friends, and we need to shine even brighter for Christ. Matthew 5, 16 says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So we, we've got all kinds of stuff we would like to talk about um, is the world flat? Is it round? Why is that important? You know, what kind of translation are you using of the, of the scriptures? How do people fall away from the gospel truth? I mean, the, this great deception that is going to play out, we read about in 2 Thessalonians 2. I mean, the evidence strongly suggests, from my perspective, it still starts with your thought life. Everything has to start with a thought. Someone or something has to think something for something to happen, just as we have this. You know, the most miracles are in your mouth waiting to happen. So it happens, you know, with the spirit. Um, this, we got a whole spirit world there that the scriptures talk about. How are you being programmed? I mean, we go around dwelling on unwanted, poisonous thoughts and not meditating on the word of God. We're re-headed in the troubled waters. So when you entertain the spirits of fear, uh, like, you know, fear of the latest terrorist atrocities or whatever the news or fake news are, are propagating, Lying signs and wonders, um, amazing advances that have been made in artificial intelligence. Does it still your peace? And and when you accept the official government narratives without examining the evidence, you know that you know kind of leaving critical thinking skills behind. When you allow yourself to think on on what you you can't do or how you should have done it and you sh- could have only done it better had you only you, you headed down the wrong pathway or how someone disappointed you, um, offended you, deeply hurt your feelings, how your life isn't working out the way you thought it should be, maybe how you feel trapped or stuck in your present situation, and and you think it's never going to accomplish more than you've already got. When you partner with feelings like that, um, it's best to understand from a biblical perspective what is going on here. I'll tell you the truth, that these are lies from the enemy. And uh, these are coming through theta brainwaves from the kingdom of darkness. We need to understand it. We need to recognize it so we can do something about it. So, that, you know, it's basically our poisonous thoughts are working and all poisonous thoughts left loose. Running around your mind releases poisonous chemicals through the hypothalamus gland in the bloodstream causes harm. It, and it's going to color your, your attitude. It's going to color your perceptions. And basically, it's going to affect and taint everything in your life. So 
we here we, we can you know look at what's going on but we're looking at it through a biblical perspective and we've got joy in our hearts because we know the word of god is coming through here it's always going to come through so if you feel like giving up and, and, and not even trying you feel like if you've lost your sense of self-esteem you've lost your confidence you feel like you know you might not even want to try anymore because chances are it won't work out you've already been disappointed with others around you, you're disappointed with yourself. It's going to leave you with a broken heart at the end of the day. But the good news is the Lord Jesus came to mend broken hearts. And we're seeing that happen. Um, Pastor Brandon and I are doing the chain breaker conferences. We're taking it everywhere we can now. We're going to be in in Georgia, in Bulgarian Georgia, in just a matter of weeks. Pastor Brandon, share a couple of testimonies. We just got back from being in Florida, your, your father's church, Carl Gallup's church. <laughs> Well, it's not his church, it's God's church, but he gets to oversee what's going on there. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you, brother. I appreciate it. And so, yeah, we've uh, several testimonies that um, have come out of that particular conference. I have two here that were sent to me in writing, and one is from a young lady that was there at the conference. And here's what she says. She says, I was wondering if you could tell Pastor McLeod something and thank him. The Sunday after the Shane Breaker conference, I thought about the forgiveness uh, with our earthly fathers. So I asked my mom if I could send a message to mine. She agreed, and so I wrote a letter on Monday, and on Wednesday, my mom sent the message to him. I forgave him for all the stuff that he did, and it felt so good to do so. Yesterday, he responded. He said he has been praying for this day. I do not know where he stands in his relationship with God, but I saw it as a great sign. He says he has been sober, since September 2013, and one of his friends said that I was a blessing, and he may not have gotten better without me. The last sentence got me. He said he loved me. The chains broke, and I praise God for that. Please tell Pastor McLeod, the person at the altar I prayed with, and Pastor Brandon, thank you for this. If it wasn't for God speaking through you, I do not think that this day would have ever come. So what an amazing thing, a young lady that was harboring a lot of um, a, a lot of bitterness and hatred and anger towards her er earthly father uh, was able to gain some freedom through some ministering at the Chainbreaker Conference there in Florida. And uh, what an amazing testimony. And the second one, this lady actually watched the, uh, watched the conference live uh, on the live stream. And then um, she's from the area where I live. And, and so when I got home, she scheduled an appointment to meet with my wife and I. And here is, uh, we ministered to her for several hours. Pastor Casper, we actually called you that day. You prayed with her over the telephone as we were ministering to her and laying hands on her. And, and here's a testimony that she sent to my wife just a few days ago. It says, I wish I had shown you my feet when I, well, let, let me preface this by saying that this lady was suffering with severe uh, psoriasis on the palm of her hand. They were literally cracks in her hand and her skin and blood was coming out of them the day we were ministering to her. I saw it with my own eyes. Um, and she says, I wish I had shown you my feet when I was over there talking to you and Brandon, but they were so bad I hated to show anyone. This morning when I got in the shower, all of the old skin fell off my feet and the soles are new pink skin, even much better than my hands and they were much worse. Normally, when they do that, they weep like a bad burn does and then scab over again. But no weeping this morning and very little itching. Not completely healed yet, but 90%. And I am praising God mightily this morning. Just thought you might like to share my miracle. It's been two years since they looked this good. And that particular lady was dealing with the same situation. She was dealing with a severely broken uh, relationship uh, with her earthly father had harbored years and years, some 50 plus years of unforgiveness and bitterness and hatred uh, towards her earthly father. And just through the process of let, beginning to let go of some of those feelings and, and beginning to speak some forgiveness out loud um, and beginning to acknowledge some things, her body literally began to heal itself. Um, and then there's a third testimony. I don't have anything in writing, but um, I was sent a picture <laughs> of a toilet full of pills. And it was from a lady at the Chainbreaker Conference there in Florida who shared with us that she was taking um, as many as uh, as nine colotopin a day. Um, and uh, 
Yeah. So, uh, and that Kalatopin's in the uh, Benzo family. And, and so, she, you know, just um, suffering with severe depression, anxiety, uh, couldn't sleep. She's on some different sleeping medications. Well, that was on Saturday that she shared that with us. On Sunday of the Chain Breaker Conference, she stopped taking those medicines. And <clears throat> I was ministering to her kind of third party and encouraging the person in direct contact with her to tell her to get those pills out of the house so that they wouldn't be there for her to return to on a bad day. And sure enough, just a few days ago, got a picture uh, via text message of where she had brought all of those bottles of pills to a friend and asked that person to help her and to be there with her as they flushed them down the toilet together. God is good, brother. He continues to heal. He's still in the miracle working business. Uh, you know, what does Malachi say? He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He's unchanging. And, and everything that we see him do in God's word from Genesis to Revelation, um, I believe that he still does every single one of them. We still have the opportunity to see every one of those miracles performed, whether it be a miracle of healing, the raising of the dead, uh, the casting out of impure spirits, uh, food provisions, you know, whatever it is, whatever miracles we see in the scripture, I believe that God still is in the business of performing those miracles today. Amen. Indeed he is. Hebrews 13, 8, he's the same yesterday, today and forever. There was um, a wonderful uh, evangelist in, in the 1900s named John G. Lake, who was um, one month away from graduating medical school. And he um, one day told his, his congregation, he went off to became a pastor ultimately, and um, he told the congregation, this is what I want you to do, because was, they were seeing everybody healed. I mean, it was just phenomenal. Um, the way God was operating through the ministry, um, he told everyone, go home, today and take all your pills and throw them down the toilet, flush them down the toilet and then apologize to the toilet. Yes. yes. Um, some of those meds that are going, you know, um, today are, are really dangerous and I don't recommend anybody flush them down the toilets. There's probably other ways um, to dispose of such toxic type waste um, without getting into the water tablet. Uh, but, um, it's interesting, you know, like um, he gave up everything um, to, to, to do this, so he had a scientific mind and he went off to South Africa. It's, a, it's an incredible story, all of it. Um, started numerous churches, um, led numerous people into salvation, and saw numerous people miraculously healed by the power of the Word of God. At one point, he was in a, a colony that had the bubonic plague had broken out, and the British government sent. Uh, number of physicians to go and help and they got there and they asked Lake, you know, what do you kind of protection are you using to, to deal with these these corpses and people with bubonic plague? And he said, I'm not using anything. I'm covered in the blood of Jesus. Don't need anything else. So being a scientist, uh, you know, sorts, I mean, he had a medical background. He, they did an experiment. He told them, you know, take some of the mucus out of this dead man's lungs and in a lab situation, they, they put the the, the plague basically in his hand, which would normally kill a man. And under the microscope, as soon as it had contact with his hand, the, the germs died on contact. And they repeated the experiment several times. So, um, you know, that, that's great faith. And how do we get great faith? Hearing the word of God and hearing the word of God and hearing the word of God. So, you know, there's Smith Wigglesworth back in England uh, about a little bit, you know, a little after the same time zone. And there's some amazing testimonies where um, there was a man that didn't have any feet. And Smith Wigglesworth told him, go buy yourself a pair of shoes tomorrow. Well, that's a really strange thing to tell a man that doesn't have any feet. So the, the guy obeys. He goes in faith to the shoe store, tells the man, I want a pair of shoes. And the salesman goes, well, what size? He goes, doesn't matter. I don't know what size, just get me a pair of shoes. And he puts his stumps in and instantly he had feet. I mean, this is documented stuff. Um, it's like, you know, sounds like stuff right out of the book of Acts. Why shouldn't that be happening today? Yeah, well, you're right. And, and you used a key word in there several times, and that was faith. So many times in the scriptures when we see even, even the miracles that we saw Jesus perform, uh, especially the healing miracles, so many times uh, he would say, 
after the person was healed or as they were being healed or even right before they were healed. He would say, it is your faith that has healed you. It is your faith that has healed you. Uh, and interesting, we don't ever see him say, you've been healed because you've just come face to face with the Son of God. He always accredited the healing to the faith of the person being healed. Uh, and, and I find that very, very interesting. So there is an element of, of faith, of our faith that it takes to receive a healing miracle. I, I believe that because that's what the scripture says. Um, so if we're praying for that healing, asking for that healing, uh, but in our back of our mind the whole time believing, oh, this will never happen for me, then I, I, I would tend to believe it's not going to happen uh, because we because we don't truly have the faith to believe that God can still do anything. And I don't mind telling you, that's been a struggle of mine over the years, especially in, you know, in the last several years of ministry and see God do crazy things. And still, you know, sometimes when you go to God prompts you to pray for healing for someone, that's, that, that's sometimes the first thought that goes through my, through my mind is, well, what if you don't heal them, God? <laughs> and, that's, and it's not my place to think that because, uh, you know, all I know is that God has prompted me to pray for healing for them. And, and so many times, we do get testimonies of healing and, and maybe it doesn't happen right there on the spot. Oftentimes, as you well know, and I've heard you teach and preach it, sometimes it these things take time. Uh, you know, I mean, we have a lot of stuff that we need to get rid of in our lives in order to be healed sometimes. And that's a process. And so I think that's another element is that sometimes we're looking for something to happen instantaneously. And while God can and does do that, Oftentimes it, it happens over, a, uh, you know, a process of time and and of, uh, you know, forgiveness uh, so many times is what it boils down to. It, it does um, have a, a number of components that we should examine here. Um, you know, it says a double mind demands unstable in all his ways. Um, so, you know, if, if you're asking and, and then I, I mean, I've had people come up to me and say things like, well, God loves you know you and other people more than me because he healed them and he didn't heal me I mean, there's healing and there's miracles and the, the, you know those are the gifts some of the gifts are, are operating the gifts of miracle operating the gift of healing uh, um the gifts of interpretation and tongues and all sorts of things and these are for today so um we need to get into the word of god so the word of god gets into us i mean we are headed into it now we are in unprecedented times um, we're looking at what's going on in the Middle East, and um, we're going to have a wonderful. I'm looking forward to an interview with your, your dad, Carl Gallops, in his new book, and Rabbi Zib, um, talking about the rabbi's um, note on who the Messiah is. So, um, things you know seem to look forward to in the future. Yeah, uh, it's it's interesting too the, the way the Lord puts things together. Um, you know, and, and in some senses, we're kind of an unlikely team that God put together. Um, an old rock and roller like me, and you know, a studious Bible guy like you. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I don't think you gave an accurate description. <laughs> <laughs> How about a country boy from North Alabama and, and, and a British rock and roller? <laughs> we we'll go with that one too. But you know, yeah. the, the Lord put it together, and you know, we, I, you, you're just like a brother to me. I mean, a real brother, you know. And, and, um, yes. Yeah. And you as well. It's amazing. You know, we go out to these conferences. And it's not like we, you know, compare like, oh, I'm going to teach this. You're going to teach that. It's the Holy Spirit directing it. And it just all harmonizes. And we're seeing people healed and delivered. So we've got this one. When's this next one? It's coming up in um, March. It's the 1st and 2nd of March in Ball Ground. That's right. March 1st and 2nd, Ball Ground, Georgia. And uh, hosted uh, by the Upper Room Fellowship, which is the church that you pastor. And, uh, the address for people that are looking to get there is 1600 Howell Bread Road, and that address will get you to the Art of Living Ministries, uh, and that's the facility where you guys, Upper Room Fellowship, meet every week for your services, and uh, so they, you guys, they've been so kind as to allow us to use that facility uh, Friday night starting at 6 o'clock, and then we'll be gathering back again Saturday morning starting at 10 and going throughout the day on Saturday. We'll take some breaks for lunch and dinner, of course. Uh, and sometimes a fellowship, and hopefully we'll have some times for some question and answer times. I always enjoy that particular part, uh, trying to get some folks involved in the audience that may have some real life questions. And I just want to encourage people that this doesn't have to be for someone who's only dealing or struggling with chemical addiction 
although that's a really, really big deal, obviously, in, in our world and in our country uh, right now. Uh, you know, but there are all types of addictions. You know, we've we've talked about it here before. Um, if you don't think you have an issue with addiction, then I would encourage you to cancel all your social media accounts and never look at them again. Uh, or I would encourage you to take a sledgehammer and throw it through your TV when you get home or <laughs> throw your cell phone out the window going home and, and never buy another one. So, you know, I mean, you know, we, we could, there can be all types of addictions. And listen, we're going to be dealing with things like depression, anxiety, uh, different uh, uh, diseases that people have been diagnosed with. Uh, you know, bipolar and schizophrenia and all that. I mean, I just have so many testimonies of people that have been healed from those things um, through the power of the word of God and through through uh, coming into a sound mind, which is something that God's word, God's word promises us when we're in a right relationship with uh, with Christ. I think that's the key word here is the relationship. That's what he wants with us. Um, there's a story with Smith Wigglesworth going back to him. I, I love it. Uh, Smith is, is, is always had a Bible with him. He just constantly was reading his, didn't read anything else really. Imagine what your life would be like if you just read the Word of God. It was a, a visiting evangelist from America came to see him one time. And uh, he bought a newspaper at the train station and he went and knocked on Smith's door in the morning when he arrived. And Smith glared at him and said, what's that on your arm? He said, well, it's a newspaper. He goes, you've got to get rid of it. I only allow the truth in my home. So, um, how many, but he was driving with a, a, another minister to some meeting, and they're talking for like 20 minutes, and Smith suddenly yells out, stop! And the guy slams on the brake, goes, what, what was the problem? And Smith goes, we've been talking for 15 minutes, and we left the Lord out of this conversation. I mean, the <laughs> Lord wants, he wants to be involved in every aspect of our life, just include, if we're just Christ-centered, in, in, include them in everything. And I think a lot of the issues today is, um, thing, you know, we've got the GMO churches today, genetically modified organisms. People don't even know what sin is anymore. We think we've got two commandments, um, you know, love God with all your mind, but least good so love your neighbor as yourself, right? So if you don't love yourself, you're in sin. If you don't love your neighbor, which is everybody with the modern day Tower of Babel, I mean the internet, um, you know, then there's sin, and then how can you say you love God with all your mind, body, spirit, and soul? So what what is sin? When we look at the scriptures, and sometimes it differs from our personal theology, and so we've got to adjust our theology to match the Word of God. For instance, when, when I first entered into the church system, after I was saved, um, I was taught that the gifts of the Holy Spirit passed away somehow miraculously 2,000 years ago. And I found out that's not the case. Yeah. In fact, there was this guy that was, um, it was John Weber, he's a rock and roll artist, you know, songwriter guy. I think he wrote for the Righteous Brothers. And he, he got saved and he's going to this church and, and, uh, he started reading the Bible for himself, and he went up to the pastor, and he said, um, so when are we going to do the stuff? And the pastor says, you know, what stuff? He goes, you know, that stuff here in the Bible, you know, like healing the sick and casting out demons. When do we get to do that stuff? And the pastor says, oh, well, you know, we don't do that stuff anymore. He goes, well, what do we do? He goes, well, you know, we, we come into church, we drink coffee, we fellowship. And, and he looked at him and said, for this, I, drank, I gave up rock and roll and drugs? Yeah. That's well, and it's Date. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like like so many other things, you know, we, we what we've done with spiritual gifts as a whole um, is we've either what you just said, pretend like they don't exist anymore um, and, and that they died 2000 years ago with the original apostles um, or we turn them into a sideshow and make a mockery of the contextual use and the contextual, uh, you know, what we see in, in, in biblical context of spiritual gifts and you know, listen, I mean, um, man, I, I, you know, if there's one spiritual gift that I tell people I know that I have and, and have all the time, it's discernment. Um, you know, God has gifted me with that. And and it plays a huge part in the ministry that I'm a part of here, you know, running a, a rehab program. You have to have discernment, you know, when you're running a rehab and dealing with 20 men every single day. Um, I feel like he's given me the gift of teaching. Um I have operated in the gifts of uh, in the gift of tongues, uh, in, in the gift of healing, in the gift of prophecy. 
Um, not things that I do every day. I don't run around saying I'm a prophet. I don't run around saying I have the gift of healing or that I have the gift of tongues. But um, I mean, I can give you a testimony. I was uh, I have the opportunity to do mission work in Central and South America. And on numerous occasions, uh, and a couple I can think of in particular, but uh, in Peru, for instance, um, I remember a particular uh, church service where I was preaching, and there was probably four or five hundred people there. And and <clears throat> I could, as I began to open the altar, of course, I'm preaching through an interpreter. Uh, I'm speaking in English, and then it's being interpreted into Spanish. And I, I saw a man in the audience just begin to break down about halfway through my sermon, just weeping and. As I open the altar up, he just jumps up out of his seat and rushes down front and and numerous other people did as well. And I couldn't find an interpreter to pray with the man. And so I just went over to him and I just began praying. And the first thing that I said, I said, I just said, God, please let him understand what I'm saying. And I began praying over him and uh, speaking things that I thought that God was revealing to me about what he was struggling with. And uh, a few minutes later, he came back to me with an interpreter and through an interpreter told me, he said, how did you know what was going on in my life? How did you know these things about me? So not only did God allow him to understand Spanish when English was coming out of my mouth, but he also (laughs) revealed to me in that moment some very specific things about this man's life and what was going on in his life. Um. You know, so so just in that one instance, you know, I mean, that's the uh, the gift of tongues and and, uh, you know, prophecy, so to speak, and, and and discernment, you know, two or three gifts wrapped up in one. Um, and I'm not I don't say that in any type of boastful manner whatsoever. You know, um, God has just allowed me to experience some of those things. And man, it's it's amazing when you get to see those things happen. And so. Why would we not uh, want to believe that all of the spiritual gifts still exist and that um, that they can be available to us as the Holy Spirit distributes them to us? They are gifts. They are called gifts for a reason because they are given to us. Um, I, I mean, my goodness, I want to believe that every one of them exists and and that that at some point in time. Uh, that I will get to see every one of them manifest, uh, you know, n- if not in my own personal life and in, 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 in ministry around me. Amen. Well, I can testify because I've been with you for a number of years and I've seen these gifts operational with you. So um, I, I validate that's the truth here. Um, th- there's a lot of testimonies um, I can think of. Um, there was a, um, a, a Chinese couple of the, the two women that went into a village and um, I think it was in Japan that got the story right and, and a number of years ago and, and they saw a crippled man and they prayed for the crippled man and he was miraculously healed they jumped out of the wheelchair all the village people came running around going you know they sort of worshiping them as, as some sort of goddesses or something doing with miraculous powers and they were going oh my god how are we going to Handle this, Lord, help us. They think we did this. We know we didn't do this. You did it, Lord Jesus. So they didn't speak the language. And, uh, so they just started speaking out and praying in, in the prayer language. But the villagers heard it in their own dialect and understood. And they, they heard the gospel. They got saved. It would, you know, that, we've heard that story um, happen, that kind of story, that kind of testimony numerous times now. It tells us in um, 1 Corinthians 13, 12, now we see through glass darkly, but then face to face, we'll know in part, even though as we're known. Um, I, I think the law reveals himself progressively. We look at this um, as we're able to understand more and more. I mean, if we can't handle the truth we got right now, how are we going to handle more truth? We'll just be overwhelmed. Um, but we are all overwhelmed with his love. Um, so we're gaining a, a deeper insight into all this. And you know, there's all these mysteries in the world and I think a lot of them are starting to be unraveled. Um, it is part of our purpose uh, here is, is to expose the devil as openly as we can, putting them under a microscope, as it were, uh, showing that invisible kingdom and how it's operating. And in some cultures, the devil is very open, uh, very easily uh, discerned. Um, he's not so subtle. I mean, look at what happened with the, the Gotham Tunnel just a few years ago. I mean, it's a, a very occultic display that happened, it was, CERN was involved in it, and I mean, he had all these 
visiting dignitaries of other countries and nations, and and here they are promoting this, you know, doubly kind of um, uh, I don't know what to call it, uh, <laughs> parade of the most bizarre thing you can imagine here. People yeah, they basically performed a satanic ritual at the opening of this tunnel. And that's yeah. interesting coming from CERN, whose whole goal, stated goal and mission is to open a portal to another world. So, <laughs> yeah, and, and so that's what happened. That's been three or four or five years ago now. And it was in Switzerland, maybe? Is that, where, is that what it that was, was? Yeah, the tunnel in Switzerland there. And yeah. I think that's like an, an issue with, you know, a lot of people looking for like, you know, is the Antichrist, you know, is, uh, and we've been given this idea that the Antichrist is going to be some smooth talking, charismatic person, right? Because when the scholars, the Bible scholars gave us that kind of picture, they didn't know about artificial intelligence yet. That's right. that, was on the, that wasn't on the board yet. Well, it is now. And then when we, now we look at it through the light of what's happening and what's unfolding with artificial intelligence. Um, Revelation 13, you know, starting to make a whole lot more sense to us. Um, we're looking at how this is, is, is playing out um, with the neural lace and all the rest of it. Um, it. It seems like, you know, AI is going to play a major role in the end times here, fulfilling ancient biblical prophecies. Again, you know, the Lord says is, um, lest those days be short, there'll be no flesh saved. But for the luck's sake, hallelujah, those days will be shortened. So, you know, again, we're going to have to shine our lights for Christ as brightly as we can in this world because it's getting darker. It's not getting lighter. Um, and there, there's, you know, some very, I, I wrote about these sort of things in Unmasking the Future. Um, so we could be today, you know, artificial intelligence uh, movement is, is once again involved in DNA uh, modifications, as probably happened in the days of Noah. Um, we're facing uh, cybernetics now, uh, augmentations, um, along with digital level of consciousness. I mean, just this week, um, there was articles coming out about how, you know, mind-to-mind uh, -mind transfers, um, tapping, reading, and, and, and hearing voices now, you know, electronically, artificially, speaking to your voice as if it was your voice. <laughs> so we, we are so there. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, there's technology available now. We've seen uh, just in the last several months articles on, uh, you know, literally being to, being able to play our thoughts uh, as a movie on a TV screen uh, through, you know, through, through reading our brain waves and things. And so, you know, who knows how these technologies will be used uh, as we move further and further on in time, I can certainly see a technology like being able to read our brain waves um, and broadcast them as a movie. I can certainly see that being used against people. Uh, it makes me think of scriptures like that things that we do in secret will be shouted from the mountaintops. I can't think of a more secretive place in the world than in our own minds. Mm. And, uh, you know, can you imagine if, if what we dwell on in the depths of our minds was played before the whole world? Uh, that could certainly be used against us, especially as believers. Uh, so, you know, who, who knows where these technologies will go? Um, is the Antichrist going to be one of artificial intelligence? I don't know. Could be. Uh, could be that the Antichrist rises up as one who can save us from the AI that we lose control of. Uh, there's all types of scenarios. But one thing we can rest assured of is that all of these technologies will play into the end time scenario. Uh, that we see unfold in Daniel and in Revelation uh, and in other places in Scripture. Um, you know, I mean, listen, brother, we're the only generation in the history of the world that has the technology to mark every human being on the face of the earth. The, all of the technologies are in place, whether it be through microchipping, whether it be through biometrics or a combination of all of that. Um, we have that ability. As a matter of fact, it's a stated goal of the United Nations, UN Agenda 2030. People can look it up for themselves. Um, a stated goal of, of the UN for Agenda 2030 is to, quote, biometrically mark every human being on planet Earth by the year 2030. Brother, that's only 11 years away. Well, we just have to sign that document and then we'll read and find out what it says. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, I doesn't jest. I'm being cynical. Sorry. Yeah. Well, think about this. So, 
it, the UN wants to mark every human being on planet Earth by 2030. I'm sorry. That is, a, that is you know, one of the most major signs of the end times, if I've ever heard of it. OK, so if that's the case and if they can succeed in doing that by 2030, think of this. That means that the Antichrist has to be alive and, and, and well now. That's what it means, and that's why we're doing this program, and that's why we do these programs, because we're trying to draw you into a, a, a deeper, closer relationship with the Lord Jesus, so we can prepare you for what's coming. Uh, one of the leaders of the transhumanist movement, Ray Kurzweil, is also mm -hmm. an executive with Google, has been yes. shouting about singularity for quite a while now, as, as that being that defining moment when computers become self-aware. Well, it kind of reminds me of Pee Wee Herman's Playhouse, where all the, uh, you know, stuff in that was was alive. The cultures and the, the the stove and the refrigerator all would talk to him and interact with him as if they were people. Well, that time is coming, and I think it's very interesting that you, your observation, um, because the Lord can see the intent of our heart. It tells us in the Word of God, the devil cannot do that. So what's he going to do? He's going to counterfeit again what the Lord has done. So, of course, that would be one of those technologies to be able to broadcast your thoughts. Um, the Turning Test, which is developed by Alan Turning um, back like in the 1950s, was a test for a machine's ability to exhibit intelligent behavior, indistinguishable from that of a human. Well, let's think about it. Just when um, we had Sophia, the first robot, in the world to achieve full citizenship in Saudi Arabia. And I'm still wondering why she doesn't have to wear the burqa over there as a female robot, but that's another question. But she also had a sense of humor when they, when they asked her, uh, you know, at the Future Investment um, Initiative Conference they had in Saudi Arabia, if she was happy to be there. Sophia, the robot, said something along the lines of, I'm always happy to be surrounded by smart people and also happen to be rich and powerful. Mm. Okay, so I mean, did, did she pass the turning e exam here? I mean, things are getting stranger every day. Um, again, except those days be short and there be no flesh saved, but for the luck's sake, those days shall be short and hallelujah. Um, you know, think about this, this is coming quickly upon us. Um, this week, in fact, it was it was it yesterday, um, President Trump had uh, signed an you know, agreement to artificial intelligence because he feels um, China and, and, and Russia are going to surpass America and these technologies. And then you've got some other strange things going on with um, uh, the, the Pope. Um, was This is recently, um, was that yesterday as well? Um, he's signing a, a historic interface covenant with the, the Middle East. On, um, and, and nobody on mainstream is talking about it, basically. But here he, he's, he, they brought together people from all the world religions, the experience this thing. Um, Pope Francis, the leader of the world's Catholic Church, and, and the Sheik, uh, was one of the, the major heads of the Sunni uh, Islamic guys, um, shook hands and symbol of brotherhood. Um, you know, what, what are we going to do with that? Um, yeah, it sounds an awful lot like a one world religion to me, brother. Yeah, it does, right. You know, we have people, Pastor Brandon, that say things like, well, I, I don't believe the Bible because it was written by man. But yet they believe the newspapers and they believe the horoscopes and they believe the <laughs> fortune cookies. It tells us in 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture has been given by inspiration of God, for profitable for doctrine, uh, for reproof, for correction, for instructions and righteousness, that the man of God be perfect, thoroughly finished in all good works. I mean, there's a lot of religious books out in the world. Um, one was written by the Holy Spirit, our holy guidebook, the supernatural, the Bible, and the other is written by other spirits. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and, and that's why we have to be so discerning. What does the Bible tell us to do to test the spirits? Um, and, and, you know, how many times did Jesus himself warn us of false prophets and false prophecies in the last days that even the very elect would be deceived if that were possible? Uh, Paul warns of that. Peter warns of that. Uh, Jude warns of that. And so, you know, we're we're approaching those times where 
uh, you know, we're we're seeing uh, apostasy within the church. We're seeing heresy within the church, and uh, we're seeing false prophets arise on the scene and uh, false doctrines and just exactly what Paul warned Timothy of, you know, the doctrines of demons or the doctrine doctrines of devils. Um, and, and, and we're, we're witnessing that happen before our very eyes. So we do have to be very, very careful. Uh, I was thinking as you were talking about the AI technologies and, uh, you know, Sophia, the robot, what are we inviting in with these AI technologies? And what do I mean by that? Well, if we research the old Testament scriptures and the old Testament gods, the little G gods, uh, Dagon and and others, what we would find from a historical context is they would carve these images, whether they be of wood or or metal or or what have you. They would shape them and form them, and then they would perform rituals to invite the the physical presence of that god into these images. And it it wasn't uh, it, it wasn't mysticism. It wasn't uh, mythology as we now call it. You know, Greek mythology. No, it was very real to these people and. We see the supernatural, the dark side of the supernatural, if you will, all over Scripture. Um, and, uh, and, and so it was a very real physical presence that was invited into these uh, statues and, and things of that nature um, from the gods. The Elohim is the word there in the, in, the, in the Hebrew, the same word used for God, for Yahweh, Father God. And depends on context, the words before it, the words after it as to how it's used. But. It was it was very, very real. And so are we doing the same thing with this artificial intelligence technology? Um, are we just giving an open door and invitation to the Elohim to come and inhabit these inanimate objects uh, and to let, allow them to take on life of their own? If I recall correctly, Elon Musk in an interview a couple of years ago said we're summoning demons with artificial intelligence. Um, IBM companies like IBM are hard at work manifesting brain implants. I mean, Agenda 2030 is involved. They want mind to mind transfers. That's a reality today. I mean, they've done experiments already where they have a rat. Say we have a rat in Washington, D.C. It's possible. Have a rat there. And they, they put in a brain ship. They train the rat some complex maneuvers. It takes weeks and weeks to train. And then they take the information stored in that rat's um, brain ship and transfer it to another rat, maybe like over in California somewhere in you know, LA. And, and that rat instantly has all the information without going through the training, knows exactly all the maneuvers. Yeah. So this is a reality, mind-to-mind -mind transfer. So could AI, um, you know, as this is, is, is developing, could it decide that it needs to grow more corn one day and determine it needs to eliminate people and farms expand growing its fields. I mean, could could AI, artificial intelligence, uh, move atoms and change realities like CERN's trying to do, opening up dimensional portals, letting things from another dimension into this one and vice versa. Um, let's not forget that um, you've got um, the self-driving cars coming. It's fastly mm -hmm. approaching uh, from this, you had Silicon Valley's um, Anthony Levinowski, who created the first church of artificial intelligence right. uh, years ago, uh, laying down, you know, um, he, he's saying if, if we, we have a machine that's a billion times smarter than the smartest person, what else are we going to call it but God? I mean, <laughs> it says, watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be called worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass down before the Son of Man. So, um, you know, it talks about the beast, the, the dragon who's got the metal teeth in Daniel and Revelation, it's got brass nails. It sounds like, you know, that's not like a charismatic world leader that we might have imagined a few years ago. It sounds like something mechanical or, or, or emerging, you know, a bionic person with computer, half computer or something. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting because, you know, a lot of people interpret those, the, the, the beast that Daniel sees and that John sees in Revelation. Uh, as being kings and, and kingdoms and countries. Uh, and the reason is because Daniel says that's what they are. These are kingdoms to, to come. And, and interesting, so if we were to look at that, uh, you know, who is the dragon as represented by an animal in today's world? Well, it's the very country that President Trump just said he's worried about outpacing us in the AI, uh, in, in, this, in the race for AI technology. It's China, you know? I mean, they're, they're symbolized by the dragon. Uh, and so, you know, in, in Revelation and in Daniel both, we see the, uh, the, the, the dragon, the lion, the, or excuse me, the dragon, 
uh, the leopard, the lion, and the bear. And uh, very four prominent countries. That's a whole nother hour-long show one day uh, that we can do, we can get into. Uh, and many, many scholars believe that we're watching the fulfillment of that prophecy begin to unfold right in front of our eyes. Uh, certainly with China rising up as, you know, as this, as this economic powerhouse and, uh, and, 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 you know, manipulating and controlling world currencies and AI technologies and things of that nature. As a matter of fact, in Revelation 13, uh, John says, records that, that the beast, this, this beast system as a whole was given its power by the dragon. That was the dragon's part in it, is that they were given their power by the dragon. Very interesting. It is very interesting. China's got a, a system in place now where they're, they're, they're rating their citizens. So if your friends or your family members say something the government doesn't like, your rating goes down and to a point where you don't eat and, and you know, you can't drink and uh, you're, you can't work, right? So, I mean, the, the prophecy again here is fulfilling and it's already in place. Daniel 7, um, it talked about, you know, the beast, the fourth beast was more powerful, more dreadful, terrible, you know, than, than you can imagine. That, he was terrified of this thing with the devourers and breaks in pieces, um, had teeth of iron. So um, where is this going? You know, CERN playing out. Like CERN is basically a, a weapons development uh, facility. I, I think from years of studying there, uh, it appears to me that they're looking at developing some kind of weaponry that they can meet at Armageddon. And they think they're so delusional, they think they're going to come against the Lord somehow. That's just not going to happen. Not the way they imagine it. Um, you know, they all want a new world order. And yes, there is a new world order coming. The Lord Jesus is coming to put the world back in proper order. Hallelujah. So I suppose we're probably running out of time, aren't we? Uh, we're at probably the end of the program again. It just goes very quickly. So, um, you know, we, we, we talked about this before. Um, the, the carbon 12, um, the 666 is the mark, right? Um, uh, carbon 12 being the most abundant elements in the universe, it's present in all forms of life. And, and, and so if, if we have carbon 12 mass, uh, you have six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons. I mean, there's that 666 building to people, just as it said, right? Um, Daniel, you know, shut up the book until the end, and, you know, knowledge is going to increase, and people are going to go to and fro. The, the Lord, his eyes go to and fro looking for who's going to obey him. So you can you can show up for that person and bless them. Pastor Brandon, there, there's people that need to get right with the Lord Jesus tonight. You can feel it right here. Um, would you be so kind to offer up a prayer that they can come now, align themselves with God Almighty, your Creator, the Lord Jesus, who loves you with an everlasting love, that wants you to be blessed and wants to restore your life and wants to heal your broken hearts. Would you be so kind, my brother? I would be honored, brother. Thank you. <clears throat> and Father, we just come to you right now, Lord, and we thank you so much for the opportunity tonight to, to be able to have the freedom, Lord, to speak truth, to speak your word, Lord. And we just pray, Father, that it has... Uh, that it has uh, fulfilled the promise of your word, that when your word is spoken, it will not return void. And so, Lord, we, we just pray tonight, Lord, that your word has fallen on, on open hearts, Lord, on open minds, Lord, that it has penetrated the hearts of the people listening. So, Lord, we do pray for, for any tonight that are listening, Lord, that, um, that, that who, whose eyes may have been opened tonight, Lord, whose spiritual ears may have been opened tonight, Lord, uh, through some things that have been said, Lord, and they may realize for the very first time in their entire life that that they have never surrendered to you and that today is that day. And so, Father, we just pray that right now, Lord, that that they would just uh, through you, Lord, that they would have the power and the courage to begin uh, admitting their sin, confessing that sin, Lord. And we know that your word tells us that when we confess our sin, that you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sin, Lord, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Lord. And so I just pray that you would give them the courage to do that, Lord, to begin to confess that sin, to, to repent, Lord, to ask your forgiveness, Father. 
And Lord, I just pray that even right now, Lord, that there would be one that would just call on your name, that they would cry out to you, Lord. Maybe they're in the moment of deepest despair they've ever been in in their entire life, Lord. And so many times that's exactly where we need to be to truly be able to call on you and and, and understand who you are, Lord. And so I just pray that, that right now that they would just call on you like never before, Lord, that they would cry out to you from the depths of their soul, Lord. And, 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 and Father, your word tells us that, uh, that that all we that all it takes is for us to to confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in our hearts that you've raised him from the dead and we shall be saved Lord your word says that for all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved and so father we just pray that right now for any that have prayed that prayer Lord that you would just put people in their lives Lord men and women of God that would that would that would minister to them that would build them up that would nurture them in their faith Lord that would lead them along and guide them in their journey. Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you once again for the opportunity tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. If you pray that with us, just now, let someone know. You can go to Redeem Ministries and contact them there. You can contact us at the Upper Room Fellowship.org. There's a contact drop down window or something there. Let us know about it and how we can continue to pray for you. And we look forward to seeing everyone at another Spiritual Encounters next week. God bless you.
Welcome to another adventure with Spiritual Encounters. We are here to help represent God's work, not ours. Besides the insightful biblical teachings shared by our host, Pastor Casper, we are also very blessed to be able to bring you outstanding interviews with some of the most sought after deep thinkers and voices in Christendom today, helping to make a difference in this world for Christ's sake. We want to keep it that way, to be truly effective in internal matters, truly demands on prayer and being led of the Holy Spirit. If you, like us, long to see the Lord Jesus, Yoshua, glorified here through spiritual encounters, we invite you to join the prayer team. There is nothing more exciting than participating in intercessory prayer with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We are a totally faith-based ministry, and so please give and support spiritual encounters as you are led. Truly, Grace and Radio have a lot in common. Grace is free to us, but cost Christ an untold price we may never fully understand this side of heaven. Radio is also free, too. It costs nothing to turn on your dial or stream audio, but it costs us a lot to stay on the air. Spiritual Encounters is almost entirely listener-supported, a privilege, but rare things in these days of big church radio corporations. We've carefully trimmed our budgets to all but wartime essentials, but operating costs are a fact of life. If you've been blessed through our programme, here are some ways you can give back as the Holy Spirit leads. Consider becoming an underwriter by contacting us or simply go to the upper room, fellowship.org, and scroll down on the main page to donate. Production of the Upper Room Fellowship and Casper McLeod Ministries. Visit us at theupperroomfellowship.org. This program is released under a Creative Commons Attribution Non Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License. The intro and outro music is performed by Casper McLeod from his album Communion, available at theupperroomfellowship.org. In my face, since I learned to pray. I got a new 